welcome to my channel, Tiffany here of Tiffany Gordon Cosplay, and I'm a professional costume and prop fabricator, as well as educator here on YouTube. And if you're new to the channel, we'd love to have you as part of our cosplay building community, so subscribe to the channel! On today's cosplay tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own son from Princess Mononoke. Nice. So, let's get started. Here are all of the tools that I used to make this knife, and I'll have links to everything in the description, as well as I have a 2D blueprint for the knife, as well as the spear, available on my website, tiffanygordoncosplay.com, link in the description. And to first start off, we're gonna talk about the handle, and for this, you're gonna need a 3 4 inch CPVC pipe. You're gonna wanna make it a little bit longer than the actual blueprint, as this is going to be inserted into the bottom part of the knife. Then, cut it to the correct length using a jeweler's saw. Next, we're going to be flattening the tip of the CPVC pipe, and for this, you're going to need some heat resistant gloves, of course, your respirator, and a heat gun, and you're going to apply heat just to the tip until that part starts to bend. And at this point, you're going to stop with a heat gun, and then you're going to grab a steel block and then push it at the edge of the table so that way you can make it flat. This will then make it easier to put inside of our knife. Now, put that piece to the side to cool and let's talk about the actual blade. Starting off by tracing the shape of the blade twice onto 12 millimeter EVA foam. Then grab your heat gun and heat treat the foam before using an X-Acto knife to cut out those two shapes. Next, draw a center guideline down the center, and then you're gonna grab your now cool CPVC pipe that is flat. You're going to get the flat part and put it into the very center at the bottom and trace where it's going to sit on both pieces of your foam. This will let you know where we are going to be removing foam to put that pipe in. And for this part, all you have to do is get an X-Acto knife and you're gonna be cutting down in one direction halfway through the foam and then cut the opposite way, leaving little squares that you can then remove with tweezers. And this should be deep enough so that way your two halves can fit together and have the pipe sit in between, but just don't cut through the foam all the way. Now for attaching it, and you're going to want to rough up the flat section of the CPVC pipe. This will make it so the contact cement glue will have something to grip onto from the smooth surface. Applying your contact cement glue to the flat part of the CPVC pipe, put that to the side to dry, as well as onto not just the parts that we cut onto the foam, but onto the entire flat part. And you will wait for both of these pieces to dry before attaching them together to give you the best results. Congratulations, you now have a pokey thing. Now, let's give it some shape. Again, draw a center guideline down the center of both sides. Then grab your box cutter and we're going to be cutting it at a 45 using your center guideline as a guideline, as well as because these are two pieces of foam, you'll use that center glue line as your other guideline and roughly just cut along those two lines all the way to the tip. If it's a little wonky, it's okay because we're gonna clean it up in a bit. Then grab your piece and go to your workbench and using your Dremel and a sanding drum, sand all of those edges so they're nice and clean. At this point, you're also going to want to add some of those textures to your piece. So this actually looks like a bone knife. And for that, I use a sanding stone, starting from the bottom using the 90 degree angle of the stone and slowly carving upward to give these kind of bone-like cracks to the piece. And you can do this as much as you want. You can also do this with an X-Acto knife. And if you do this with an exacto knife, you will want to use a heat gun to open up all those channels. I did a mixture of both and it looked really good in the end. And now for the last little pieces, the decorative croissant thingies. And you're going to want to trace this piece onto two millimeter EVA foam four times. Again, heat treat the foam and then cut it with an exacto knife. And I personally like to round all of my edges and I do this with a sanding drum, but you don't have to. And after that, and after that, I traced where I wanted it to sit on my blade. And then with contact cement glue applied to both the blade part and the back of the croissants, waited for those two pieces to dry fully before attaching them together to complete this knife. Oh wait, I lied. There's one more step, but it's not necessary. 
It's only if you would like to have kind of a wood-like texture onto the pipe. And for this, I use contact cement glue, applying it in strokes going from the bottom down. This will give it a wood-like texture, as well as give your Plasti Dip a better grip onto the smooth surface. And now it's done. Okay. Now for the painting portion of this knife. And here are all of the supplies that you'll need for painting the knife. Reminder, if you don't have an airbrush gun, you can just hand paint this, it's totally fine. And again, links to all of this in the description. And the first step for this knife is to prime it. And for this, we're gonna be using Plasti Dip. You're gonna apply the Plasti Dip onto all sides of the knife, doing this three times, waiting an hour between each dry coat to fully prime your piece. And our paint that we're gonna be using for this project is all provided by Cretex Colors. And if you've never airbrushed painted before, it is all about painting in layers. So we will need to do a base coat of jet black, applying it to all of the croissant pieces, as well as to the handle of this knife. Once that layer is dry, then we're gonna go with crimson, applying this just to the croissant pieces. And for a slight highlight on these pieces, I went back with pyrrole red, which is a little bit brighter, to the center of the croissant pieces. And our last coat is going to be for shading, and this one we're going to be doing a mixture of crimson and jet black. Applying this around the edges of our croissant pieces, as well as to our handle. And one more time with jet black, this time just around the handle to give it a little more shading. Now those parts are done, so let's mask them off using masking tape. For this, you're going to want to get your masking tape applied to your leg, so that way it will remove the stickiness ever so slightly, and then cover up your croissants. And for the handle, you really don't want to apply the masking tape directly to it, as this is more likely to peel off your contact cement glue and Plasti Dip from the plastic surface. So for this, I used some computer paper to cover it, and then at the very tip, I used a tiny bit of masking tape. This way, it would be just as good. And of course, don't forget about Fluff, because she has to supervise the whole process to make sure it's done correctly. Now to paint the blade portion of this knife, and we're going to be starting off with a base coat of cream. And once that's dry, we're going to be using a mixture of cream, Hansa yellow, and violet to give us this slight brown look to the base of the knife. This is going to be making sure that our knife looks more like bone when we start adding all of the layers. Once that coat of paint is dry, we're then going to be painting painting using a paintbrush. And this needs to be a dry paintbrush, so don't put it into water. And you're going to dip it into your paint ever so slightly and then rub it onto the surface of your knife in all directions. Make sure it's really dry and loose all over. And this will give you a natural bone-like texture look onto the surface. And if you'd like some areas to pop out more, you would want to apply the paint a little bit thicker in those areas. If you want the brown to show through, do less of the cream. And you can get a more natural bone-like look by doing different thicknesses of the paint with your dry paintbrush. Then grab your airbrush gun one more time and we're gonna be doing a mixture of cream, Hansa yellow, violet, and jet black. And for this, we're gonna be working in smaller sections. So you wanna apply the paint really quickly onto the surface. And while the paint is still wet, you're going to grab a paper towel and wipe it all away. This is going to put all of those dark colors into all of those creases that we made for those bone textures. And the final step for this is going to be grabbing your airbrush cleaner for your airbrush gun. And you're going to put a small bit onto a paper towel. And then while it's still wet on your paper towel, you're gonna wipe it onto the surface of your painted area on the knife. And this is also going to remove a little bit of that top paint and give you more levels, as well as make it a little brighter. And bam, 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 you finish painting your knife. Unless you want to make it bloody. And for this, you're gonna wanna remove all those masking tape and paper and go back to your airbrush booth. And my favorite paint for making realistic blood onto props and to your costumes is using Cretex Colors Candy Line, specifically their blood red color. And for this, I ended up filling up the cap of the paint 
and then grabbing the tip of the knife and literally just dipping it in and then putting it the opposite way and letting it naturally drip down the blade. You can do this as much as you want, however gruesome you want the knife to be, uh, but that's kind of what I did. And then after that, I leaned it against the wall and with a dry paintbrush, dipped the paintbrush into the paint again and then spritzed it onto the blade, giving it a nice little splatter-like look. And that kind of will complete your blood gruesomeness on your blade, if you want. The only step left is to seal your piece, and for this I'm going to be using Createx Colors UVLS Satin Sealer. And for this you do need to apply it with an airbrush gun if you used the blood red candy line, as this will smear everywhere. If you did not apply any blood, then you can apply the sealer using a paintbrush. But you'll want to put this onto both surfaces, let dry, and then your knife is complete for your son cosplay. And that guys is how to make your very own knife for your son cosplay from Princess Mononoke. And I hope you found this video helpful for making your very own one, or maybe for helping you make a spear as well, because it'll work just about the same. And a big thank you to all of my company sponsors here on YouTube, as well as all of my YouTube members, specifically those legendary members who financially help to support me so I can continue doing this as my full-time job. And don't forget to like this video as well as subscribe to the channel. And I will see you for our next tutorial, which will be more Princess Mononoke ones. So stay tuned. Rawr.